Here's some fun facts about Sir Philip Sidney. Well, I say fun, uh, not really that much fun, but they are facts. At the age of 14, he went to Oxford University. This seems somewhat precocious to us, but at the time, it was not unusual for the rich young men like him uh, to go to university at um, extremely early ages, perhaps even 11 and 12 sometimes. Uh, more unusually, he followed this up with five years of touring Europe. This was a very early example of what later became known as the Grand Tour, in which rich and titled young men would travel around Europe to become more rounded human beings and to learn things. In, his, in Sydney's case, uh, his intention was to improve his French, Italian and Latin. But, I hear you cry out, surely there weren't any ancient Romans in Europe at the time. Quite right. Uh, but in fact, Latin was the uh, common language of educated people. So people other than French and Italians, he would certainly uh, have conversations with in Latin. Perhaps more importantly, he met some of the great European leaders of the time. In 1577, at the age of 22, he was sent as ambassador to the German emperor, Rudolf II. The idea secretly was to form a Protestant league uh, to counteract the power of Spain, which was the superpower of the time. In 1579, he made the rather ill-advised step of writing to the Queen, advising against a proposed marriage to the Catholic Duke of Anjou. In response, the Queen sent him away from court. This was called rustication. In the same year, a man called John Stubbs wrote a pamphlet uh, doing exactly the same thing, advising against the Catholic marriage, and for his pains had his hand chopped off. So you see, uh, Philip Sidney actually came off quite well there in comparison. In the same year, 1579, he married a Francis, daughter of also Francis uh, Walsingham, who was uh, the Queen's Secretary of State. So um, in, in many ways, he was a squillionaire in terms of social capital, uh, the son and um, nephew of very, very powerful people. During his exile from court, he wrote a book called Arcadia, which he described as a trifle and triflingly handled. This uh, trifle was 180,000 words long. He also wrote uh, his sonnet sequence, Astrophil and Stella, which was for Penelope Rich, uh, who was uh, Penelope Devereux, the sister of the Earl of Essex. Uh, so he was clearly infatuated with her, but the the relationship, so we're told, was a courtly love that is non-physical. Well, we will never know. He also wrote a very influential book called The Defence of Poesy, asserting the value not only of poetry, but of literature in general. In 1585, he was appointed by the Earl of Leicester to um, help the Dutch to fight off their Spanish overlords and was made governor of a town called Flushing. Yeah, sorry about that. I couldn't resist it. Sadly, the town in, in the Dutch language is called Vlissingen, which doesn't lend itself readily to gags. Anyway, he uh, wrote to Walsingham, while Governor of Flushing Walsingham, remember, was his father-in-law, that it might be a really neat idea if the Queen paid her troops to prevent them from deserting. The Queen was famously parsimonious and didn't like parting with ready cash. In 1586, while still in uh, the Netherlands, he volunteered for a very dangerous mission to stop the Spanish from resupplying the town of Zutphen, which was under siege at the time. During the action, he was shot in the thigh, which is um, a wound that nowadays he probably would recover from, but at the time, it, it was a very serious business. The, the, the bullet would have carried some of the fabric into his uh, flesh and uh, that meant he went gangrenous. And he died a lingering and very painful death at um, Arnhem, which was the scene hundreds of years later of another massive military cock-up. But that's another story. As he lay dying at Arnhem, it is reported that he made reference to the love of his life, Stella, otherwise known as Penelope Devereux, Lady Rich. There came uh, to my remembrance of vanity wherein I had taken delight whereof I had not rid myself. It was the Lady Rich, but I rid myself of it, and presently my joy and comfort returned. 
<laughs> anyway, his funeral was held at St. Paul's Cathedral. He was a national hero, and it was paid for by his distinguished father-in-law and was the costliest, it is said, until that of Winston Churchill in 1965. Anyway, obviously, Philip Sidney, massively influential, hugely romantic, and uh, was hero-worshipped before and after his death, particularly by poets. Hope you enjoyed that and found some fun in it. Not that I approve of fun in any way. <laughs>